The downturn in the price of oil is affecting economies right around the world in different ways. While some stand to benefit, others, such as Canada, will likely be net losers. If we follow Norway's example, it may lighten the drag of shrinking GDP and employment from the oil sands. Back in 1990, Norway created a sovereign wealth fund to capture the country's oil revenue. 100% of revenue from non-renewable energy sources goes into the fund. Annual contributions and growing investments have seen the value of that fund swell to $1.1 trillion. And Norwegian law allows the governments to draw as much as $8.5 billion from the fund every year to balance the books. The ability to draw from the fund allows Norway to maintain its policies during turbulent economic times and is thanks to that decision 25 years ago, a decision some say Canada should follow. Greg Peltzer is an Associate Prof of Political Studies at the University of Saskatchewan. Great to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. So let's start with uh, the challenge, which is we can't go back in time and do this 25 years ago and, and probably should have. We know that Alberta did have a heritage right. fund that it kind of let go a little bit. Starting from today, is there still time for us? Uh, absolutely, and it, it's never too late to, to start building sovereign wealth funds and vitally important for provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan. We see the Northwest Territories is actually embarked in creating their own futures fund. But, but you, you point out here's the reality. We've become addicted to, to uh, resource revenues and they've been part of general revenue streams within provincial government budgets. So the, the approach I, I would suggest is we look at it in a 20 year uh, frame and if we knock down 1 20th, which is about 20% of what uh, Saskatchewan draws on its natural resource wealth, about 25% for Alberta. But if you staggered it over that uh, period of time, we could get to 100% like Norway. So one of the things that made it easier for Norway is uh, it's one country, uh, there aren't uh, individual states inside the country with a whole lot of political power. It's a very homogeneous place. In this case, uh, you would have uh, provinces, I think, putting their hands up and saying, well, just who owns this sovereign wealth fund and why is the royalty from our resource, which is how Albertans think of it, going into some broader pool? Yeah, and, and this is where I think we're going to need a multiple uh, sovereign wealth funds. So there'll be provincial uh, sovereign wealth funds like the Alberta yeah. uh, Heritage Fund and the one that the Brad Wall government is proposing, uh, uh, a heritage fund for Saskatchewan as well. So the provincial royalties would go into a provincial fund managed by provincial uh, agencies of the provincial government. And then the federal government should have actually one of its own. Uh, drawing off pre uh, predominantly from the income taxes it, it gains from uh, uh, non-renewable resources. So in Canada we could have as many, well, anywhere from seven to ten sovereign wealth funds. One of the things we talk about, uh, not everybody believes it's a real phenomenon, Greg, but Dutch disease, the effect on the non-resource parts of the economy when you have high resource prices. Right. It, can we use these sovereign wealth funds to help offset that? Can they invest, for instance, in other parts of the economy and actually help us uh, kind of right the balance? It, it, absolutely. And you raise a really, really important point, and this is part of the genius of the Norwegian fund. Because they take their rev, uh, revenues from their natural resources in oil, and put it in the, into the fund rather dr than directly into the economy. They mitigate most of the problems that you incur with, uh, with Dutch disease. So the Norwegians are, are a standout example of how you avoid Dutch disease and how you actually build a, a strong uh, dynamic economy built on the resource sector. They've turned around and take the investments from that, the interest from their sovereign wealth fund and are able to invest it in new industries like uh, biopharmaceuticals from the coast and uh, liquid natural gas, all uh, renewable energy resources. So they're doing a lot of cutting edge stuff, diversifying their economy and avoiding the problems of Dutch disease. So uh, in terms of kind of starting fresh, are there some places that have a better shot at it? I mean, I'm thinking of reserves that have yet to be tapped, such as those in Newfoundland. Uh, there's still obviously parts of the Bakken that we've got yet to get to, because as you say, governments that already have oil revenue are kind of addicted to them for existing uh, operations. Is it better with revenue they haven't yet touched yet? For sure, yeah, you're in, and a, a, a clear advantage if you haven't started drawing on those natural resources. Northwest Territories is definitely in that position. But even a, another part that's really important uh, for success or failure is having a social consensus within a province that this is the right thing to do. So I, even in a case like Saskatchewan, which is yet to start a sovereign wealth fund, I think it has a clear advantage over a province like Alberta 
And we think a few years ago when there were the Ralph Bucks, when there was excess dollars and they were handing out checks to individual Albertans. That kind of a thing probably would not happen or be seen as acceptable within the political consensus of a province like Saskatchewan. So social consensus on these to build a fund is critically, critically important. Newfoundland would be another province, I think, in a very strong position as well. All right. We've got to leave it there, Greg. It's an important subject. Appreciate your time with it. Thank you kindly. Greg Peltzer, Associate Prof of Political Studies at the University of Saskatchewan.